6 a.m. Mm -hmm. We're about to catch our plane to Milan. We walk out of our door and it's just chaos, all the people coming home from the bars. So today's not turning out so great so far. We messed up and left the EU and went to another terminal. And okay, uh, Jenny and I are in a bit of trouble. We accidentally left the Schengen zone in the EU. So we got a big passport control to let us back into the Schengen zone without going through security again. Okay. Update. No problem. They let us back through. That was easy. They looked like, oh shit, that was our bad. And now we just realized we are flying to the further away airport in Milan, not the closer airport in Milan. So we're going to have to take a train, no, we to take an Uber or a bus to the train station in Bergamo and then take a train from Bergamo to Milan to catch our next three train system down to Vanarola, right? And then from there either take a bus or hike, likely hike up to our place in Chantara. Yeah. I knew this day was coming, I just didn't know it would be this soon. First time in our four and a half years of flying together. Window seat. We've landed on our flight. We need to get to the taxi stand to take a taxi to the train station. Otherwise we are, might have to spend a night in Milan. We made it in the cab. We're gonna make our train at one. Hopefully. Okay, what time you at the train? First train. It smells like Nana's house here. It does. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. It smells like a smoggy train station. No, it smells <laughs> like my, my Nana's house. It is kind of a smoggy train station though. <laughs> so I just noticed we're at platform 21 in Milan Central Station. And I'm reading a book right now about Italy and this is actually the platform that the Nazis used to ship the Jews off to what they called work camps in Poland and they're actually going to Auschwitz towards the end of World War II. There's a memorial here dedicated to them but we weren't able to find it but I just thought that was really interesting that I was reading a book literally today about that and they mentioned this station and this platform and then I looked up and our train was leaving from that platform. Sarah, second train? Arranged, uh, oh my god, so arrived a little late, like by three or four minutes, and then had a connection of like seven minutes. So we're running around from time, which platform this train was at? Three for three so far. We made it, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> made it. Our fourth train today. Starting. Tired. And alerted to tell you. We're at uh, hour 12 and a half travel today. Yeah, we made it to Manarola. This isn't where our Airbnb is. I think we're just at the next town over there, just uh, right up. No sign of our Airbnb host. So we're gonna walk. <laughs> Look at my wifey, absolute rock star. What a babe. So now we're climbing through Olive Gardens. It's steep, it's no joke. We have all our shit stuff. Good job, babe. Whoa. Look at this. Every time. Amazing. Okay, go on. Easy does it. Easy does it. I don't want to fall down here. Totally dressed for hiking, by the way. Got my front pack, backpack, bag of snacks, right there. Camera. <laughs> Just a nice stroll up to our apartment. Tucked in along a very dramatic coastal section of the Italian Riviera like five tiny medieval pastel colored towns. The Cinque Terre, or Five Lands, refer to the coastal towns of Rio Maggiore, Manarola, Cornelia, Varnazza, and Monte Rosa. These terraced hills would be our home for the next week. Look who just raged over the Alps to join us in Italy. Kitsa, Kieran and Leah. We all crammed into this tiny Airbnb, but it's worth it because 
of that. This is our coffee spot. Okay, Kieran's braved the traffic. Got us to Monterosso. Yep. This is this is one of the oldest towns of the five. Here, it's been around since. Well, I think the first mention of it was in 1048, according to our tourist brochure. So that's pretty old. And it's also the biggest one. It's the only one that is allowed to build giant buildings like this. And so it has all the big hotels, but it also has the best beach. Tell us where we are again. Monterosso. We were on the, I think, smaller side of town and we thought it was like beautiful, most amazing thing in the world. And we <laughs> took this little trail over and we found this other, other amazing part of the town. We can sail here. We can definitely sail here and we will sail here. So I was just telling Jenny that the Americana was invented here in World War II because the American GIs would order, would drink the coffee and they just thought it was way too strong so they just put water in it. <laughs> so now a cappuccino with water is, is called an Americana. Americana. Yeah. During World War II, the Cinque Terre was home to many partisan anti-fascists, so the Nazis still installed pillboxes to defend the coast after occupying Italy. Monterosso even witnessed a naval battle where three German Kriegsmarine ships were torpedoed by U.S. submarines and the townspeople rode out in fishing boats to rescue any survivors. Day two here in Cinque Terre with Kieran and Leah. I mean... Well, yeah, obviously, and Jenny. <laughs> We're navigating our way from Cornelia to Monterosso via some kind of coastal trail. It's, yeah, it should be about four and a half hours of hiking, did we say? Yeah, I don't know. I think we can do it in free. Yeah, we have a... <laughs> yeah. I think we're cruising. Yeah. Jenny's so leading us on a blistering pace. <clears throat> we had an amazing dinner last night. Pesto, local pesto, they're famous for that here. About four bottles of wine, <laughs> a sunset, in an olive garden. a sunset in an olive grove. Not the, not the Olive Garden. Oh yeah, <laughs> an Olive Garden. Yeah, and Olive Garden. <laughs> <laughs> no breadsticks. So I think we're halfway to the next town, which is Vernazza, and then we're gonna grab some snacks and drinks, and then move on. Like a city ordinance here that's like, oh, if you live in this town, you always have to have like garlic and onion cooking in your hand. <laughs> yeah. So it's Constantly. Post gelato stop. We are headed to Monterosso now from Vernazza. And we're really high, up in the mountains. There's Monterosso off in the distance. Almost there. We made it. Good job. Yay. <laughs> Beach time. Cold swim, cold drink. Hot wife. Hot wife, oh. That night we enjoyed a late dinner in Manarola, caught up with some friends back home, and said goodbye to Kieran and Leah who are heading back to Switzerland to resume their studies. Uh, <laughs> reference. You're on the vlog. Hi, Pupper. I can, I can hear you, but I can't smell you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. We spent the rest of the week eating complex carbohydrates and scrambling all over the hillsides on the connecting trails of the Cinque Terre. We are walking from Manarola to Rio Maggiore today. This is supposed to be a beautiful 10 kilometer walk along these mountain trails here. But it looks like our trail might be 
crossed off here. There's a an electrified fence there that Jay and I could both easily parkour right over, but we probably better. shouldn't. Wait, I think we keep going. Oh, keep going. Yeah. Oh yeah. And Jenny just said that we could jog from here. Well, let's not record us running. Okay. But I'm going to anyway. Okay. Okay, we found 501. You nervous about that fence? Everything's been electrified so far. <laughs> you know I was gonna do that, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. So we're halfway back on our second leg of our hike from Rio Maggiore. I can't say that word. Rio Maggiore. Rio Maggiore. Back to Velastra. We hiked up a uh, side of a mountain for 45 minutes straight. Stairmaster. The flies were buzzing us like we were about to keel over and die. So I'm glad we made it. Yeah, that makes that makes it the fifth out of five of the towns of the Cinque Terres that we've seen. Mm -hmm. And a bit of elevation. So. A lot of elevation. Yeah. We're tired now. <laughs> Okay, it's a very important part of cooking. Yeah? Where's the cheese? Are we out? No, I wrapped it up. Oh, the Where's Parmesan? Yeah, we're out. Sorry. The stone walls of the terraced hillsides are constructed without mortar and need constant maintenance. Laid end to end, they would stretch as long as the Great Wall of China. Terraces are packed full of grapevines, olive trees, and sometimes amateurs doing yoga. Lunch time. Marina, Nicola. Uh, no water. Yum yum. Did you like it? What? The unknown seafood antipasto. Yeah, actually, it was really good. We destroyed it. Jenny, what did you think of lunch? Good. Is it pretty good? Oh. <laughs> it's our first Michelin star lunch. We're pretty excited about it. Benissimo. After lunch, we watched the Manarola Harbor Master store a local boat, lifted by crane since the town doesn't have a dock. We then began our final hike up to Velastra and packed our bags for a trip to Tuscany. This is the trail back up to Velastra. Down about a thousand feet. And <clears throat> look at how they har harvest the olives here. They lay these sheets down to collect everything. Collect all the olives so they can make olive oil. They don't eat an olive. <clears throat> yeah, I, I ate one off the ground. ground. <laughs> and it's really gross. Really, really gross. Like maybe the worst tasting thing I've ever tasted. <laughs> Jenny's got to eat one still. No, I'm good. You believe me? Yeah, they're gross. <laughs> okay. Next up on Lost Luggage, we visit the birthplace of the Renaissance in Florence and take a road trip through the rolling hills of Tuscany.